haven't had one of these for a while, so high time for another electronics on the floor. And today's topic is bicycle dynamos. It came about by accident because I was at a ham fest, they were packing up, it was near the end. Anyway, there was a box of these bicycle dynamos and a few other bits. Five dollars, so how could I resist? Here's a closer look at two of them. This one looks pretty old. Hatsuno brand. And you might be able to read it there. 6 volts, 3 watts. And there's just one connection there. Um, the body of the dynamo and then the output here. So um, this would be connected to the frame of the bike and then worked against the isolated output there. This other one is heavier, looks a bit more modern. Elephant brand, made in China. And there are two connections. I think one of them is for a headlight and the other for a tail light. Now you can just see there, 2.5 volts at 0.5 watts. Maybe that's a tail light. And this one here, 12 volts, 5.5 watts. So that will be for the headlight, this other one for the tail light. Something else I wanted to mention, this could be handy if you are using a generator like this. Just got a bit of wood, made a hole as it's quite large, I had to drill it and then I used a tapered reamer to open it out. Anyway, it fits snugly on the rotor of the dynamo. The idea was I could put a little handle here and that would make it easier to turn. Although, if you want to get the highest voltage, you need to be turning this quickly and for that it's better to have some sort of gear or belt mechanism. As you can see I've drilled several holes up and down the wood just as an experiment. I didn't end up using this. I found I could turn this faster with my bare hands just holding this between my knees. Let's see if I can get some voltage out of this. With the multimeter set to DC not very much at all. But on AC, definitely working. Yes, this dynamo is AC, not DC. Which is very useful, as you'll see in a minute. I just held the dynamo against the tyre and when I turned the pedals hard I was able to get close to the rated output. I used a resistor multimeter. Uh, with the resistor it's of a few ohms, um, maybe in the 5 to 20 ohm range. And the idea of trying different amounts of resistance was to work out how much current I could get and with a multimeter you work out the current you measure the voltage the resistor might get a bit warm anyway that gives you an idea of how much power the dynamo puts out at various speeds anyway I was able to get uh, close to uh, the 5 watts it says on the dynamo here the beauty of AC is you can get a transformer and step the voltage up. This transformer is a low power type, probably would have come out of something like a clock radio. It's got the AC cord still attached. So one side's 240 volts, the other side I'm guessing uh, is uh, maybe, maybe it's 12 volts. Um, 
maybe it's six volts either side of the center tap which you can see is the black wire so if I connect the dynamo to this winding a low voltage winding then I should be able to get a much higher voltage coming out of the plug that's very handy if you want to light a neon light like this neon lights take very little current but they do need quite a high voltage to fire maybe 70 to 90 volts with any luck I'll be able to team this dynamo with this transformer to get this neon to work not turning it very vigorously but I am getting 40 to 50 volts indicating the transformer is stepping up well we got over 80 there now over 100 Oh, it peaked at 113. Most promising is this garden stake. Would you believe I got it up to 190 volts? Same connections as before. Dynamo. Transformer. Connections to this neon lamp. Right now I don't have a resistor. The neon is connected directly across the 240 volt winding on the transformer. And it just needs a twist of the dynamo to do it. I'll try the other dynamo. A similar result. Neons are very low current devices and are best used with series resistors. First one we have here is 100k. Now if we assume 100 volts in series with 100k, the current is very very small. Something like 1 milliamp. Despite that small current, the neon is still lighting. Next resistor we have here is 820K. So then the current will be about 120 microamp. Not quite as bright, but the neon is still firing. Being able to fire at high voltages but very low current is one reason why neon lights were very useful to do antenna work with high impedance antennas. You could just put the neon near the transmitter's output and it would light, sapping very little energy from the tank circuit. If you're using N-fed antennas and L-match antenna couplers, you can do the same thing. You might even only need to connect one leg of the neon. Finally, this is why you watch this video.
So that's our look at bicycle dynamos. They actually require quite a lot of effort to get very much current from them. Still, they have some uses. Maybe you can think of some more. If so, please let me know in the comments below. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books, Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.